Welcome back to my animal house. We're down here in the high bang, and I'm going to do another video on the rats, the ASF rats. Maltese, you might want to call them, devil dogs. They got a lot of names, and uh, I just kind of wanted to go over a little bit of uh, some of the tips and tricks that I've learned um, breeding these guys, and uh, as far as like caging, some of the things that uh, I've changed along the way, and just some tips and tricks on that, and uh, population control. What are the things that I do to keep my population down to where I'm not breeding way too many or not enough? And I don't think there is really a happy medium for anybody that breeds rats for a snake collection because it's all on the snakes. I only have six snakes. If all of them eat once a week, every week like they're supposed to, I probably couldn't breed enough with what I have going on right now. But, you know, there's always one or two that don't eat, and they don't eat every week. You know, some sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. They're really picky on their eating, and they'll let you know when they want to eat and when they don't. So you just kind of go with that. You know, anything extra, you can always euthanize it and freeze for later. If, you, if you're not breeding enough, then you're just behind. So it's kind of better to stay on the, the heavier end if you do have a bigger collection or, a, you know, a collection that you are feeding. Or if you're helping other people feed their collections, maybe, with your rodents. So uh, I just kind of wanted to share all this with you. I haven't made a video on them in a little while, so bang, here we go. I'm going to get the camera turned around. I'm going to show you kind of what I got going on right now in the rack, and uh, we'll get on with this video. And uh, hey, if you like uh, rat videos like this, ASF videos, um, anything that's got related to animals, I have a monitor and different animals. If you like what you see on these videos, think about subscribing to the channel, liking this video, and uh, turning on that notification bell so when I do make other videos, you'll be notified. So let's get on with this one. All right, everybody, we'll start here at Colony 1. We'll go right into there. There's the male of the bunch. There's a female back there. That's, she's ready to go with some babies, too, so that's why we're going to talk about a little bit of population control in this video. Yeah, let me get underneath here. Right there. Just trying to get so disturb no babies. Alright, so he's, these are my ASF rats. As you can see, we got a couple different sizes in there. I got tiny little babies. And um, and then I got some bigger ones. And uh, that's why I need to do a little bit of population control. I, I run right now two colonies at one male and two females. And if, and if they, they breed like they are normally, and if the snakes ate every week, like I said, they'd, uh, they would, uh, they'd probably do alright. But... Um, the snakes don't always eat every day, and I have some in the freezer now, so I just try to control the population the best I can. This is my little albino female right there. And um, so is what I do is I take the male out, and, and it, it's a lot harder with ASF rats because in uh, ASF rats, you can't just take out the male and just reintroduce him back again. They'll kill him. They'll, they'll hurt him. They'll fight. They just, it, it's, they're not part of the colony no more, so it's really hard to do that. With other rats and mice, you can just take out the male slow them down and then when you're ready again put the male back in and everything's all good with these guys that are colonized and have babies it doesn't work that way so uh is what you have to do is you can take a male out and then uh you just one of the one of these you just grow them out and it'll take a couple of months for them to to actually grow up and and start breeding so then that gives you a couple of months to slow things down and so yeah when you're slowing things down and then that'll give the the male in here time to grow up like i said and then and then he'll be ready to breed and then rats and, and mice and the inbreeding and, and especially in uh, ASF rats is, you know, they don't let any newcomers into the family. Like even if I had the two females and I wanted to introduce a, a male from a different colony, a different, you know, gene and all that. If I, if I put the male in there, e even if the females did breed, which they probably will because they want to keep their colony going, they'll breed. And then afterwards, they'll hurt the male. They'll kill him and they'll make sure that he, because he's not part of the colony, and they'll just raise up the babies and start the colony all over again. So basically, you're just replicating that. And with the two colonies that I have, if I offset like that every couple of months, just take one of the, the main male out, it'll slow the colony down a little bit and then... I produce a little less rats, and then I don't have so many overflow and so many in the freezer. So, yeah, that, that helps me maintain my rats. You know, I feed them the F6 Missouri diet. As you can see, I got plenty of babies. Everybody's healthy. Everybody's rolling. 
you know, and, and, and this kind of works for me and, you know, so I'm just kind of sharing with you, it's kind of how I do it and how I rotate it with the two colonies and it keeps them, uh, just slow down enough to where I'm producing just enough for me and a little bit for the freezer as well. So, uh, yeah, that's how I do it. And, uh, let's go down the colony too. These guys are getting riled up and, uh, oh, look at you cutie. And, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about some of the tips and tricks of the caging and stuff like that. Okay. Now that we, you know, we're talking about all the population control and, and you know, me taking out the male and, and rotating the two tubs with the male, taking them out, leaving one in there. That's for, that's just my ways of, of controlling my populations. I'm not saying everybody should do that. I'm not saying it's going to work for everybody. The, you know, there might be a set of females that, that will accept in a male. I don't know. Maybe somebody's had, every time I've tried it, I have had nothing but bad luck and, 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 and things end up just the way I don't want them to. These are just the ways that I've, uh, <laughs> I'll quit now, that I've uh, been able to make it work for me. And you can get these guys together in other ways. Like if I wanted to take a, you know, a two from here and two from here and, and do a whole clean tub, make them their own environment, put them together. There may be a little bit of fighting if, depending on how young they are. But, they, you know, they'll, they'll grow up and develop their own colony. This population control that, you know, that I'm talking about in this video for me is basically how I control my two colonies. You know, I could make more colonies and I can enter, you can introduce some different ways, but to be able to keep these females, which produce really well for me. And, and, you know, I like to keep the same ones around. I wish I could keep the male around, but they'll just produce too much. So the only way that I can slow them down is, you know, is to take out that male for a little while and then uh, let one of these grow up and he'll take over that position. They're, you know, happy to do so. It's no big deal. And it's kind of how it works in the rat world. So I hope these, you know, these are just more and more, you know, things that I'm learning that work for me. And if they don't work for you, that's fine. You know, whatever works for you, share with me. Maybe I'm doing something wrong that I could change that, that other things will work for me. But until then, this is kind of how I do it. These guys are just getting crazy. Quit now. <laughs> All right. All right, everybody, I just kind of wanted to stop here for a second. And is what I did, I wanted to suggest that, you know, especially to all you DIY guys that do your own racks like I did in this one. And uh, usually everybody uses the quarter inch for uh, for the mice and a half inch for the for the rats. But um, to me, I, I would suggest I is what I did is uh, when I did this, I separated the two to where I could have this section at a half inch and then I overlap some quarter inch over this because this used to be a it had a half inch on this side so is because when you're having babies and if you have a hide in there the babies will get on top of the hide and if they climb up top they will get out of a half inch even the asf rats will some people say oh just keep the hopper full and then you don't have to worry about um with mice you don't have to worry about them getting out as much but the asf rats they will wiggle out of here so as what i did is i just take a little piece of quarter inch green because underneath where their food is it's all half an inch see that or not oh, she can. there we go it's all half an inch underneath there versus the quarter inch that's you know over there to where they can't get out so is what i do is i just kind of let me send back i take a piece of this quarter inch and i um you know just cut out the corners and just basically make a box top just kind of fold it in to where it just kind of makes a top to to go over the top because even if they do climb through there if they're getting a little meal and they climb through there ain't no way for them to go and they'll just climb back into the cage so you just wiggle it in there to the food and it just covers it and nothing can get in or out of there. So it helps, you know, to where you can still use the, the quarter inch over here and the half inch here. And then you don't have to worry about them getting through. So that's just my tip of what I do All to right, keep them in there in the colony so. two here for a little bit. And uh, this is the same thing. And this is another thing I do too for, uh, for, for the little guys that are in here that are in between. Make sure to always drop a little bit of food. You don't have to drop a lot because, you know, they'll pee on it and all that. But drop a little bit down there because that's what they're trying to do is get to some food. And if they get to the food and find them, you know, openings big enough, they will get out. So if you do run a hide and they're able to get to the top, you got to be careful of that because they will, you know, climb out. So if you got a hide in there, make sure to do this. To where then they do have a hide and they can climb on top of it and that kind of thing. And here, look out. 
Oh, I should have got my hook. What was I thinking? So I got tinier babies in here. But yeah, these little uh, hides that I use. Look out, buddy. I don't know if he's just sniffing or going to bite me. But either way, these hides I use are just, uh, I go to the dollar store and in the pet section, there's a, uh, these are just food bowls. They're just, they're pretty cheap. They're only a buck. I just cut me a hole in there and they kind of chew it out to the size that they want. So it makes kind of convenient for, you know, hides and makes it really cheap and, you know, so that's another tip. But yeah, so these guys, and make sure to always, like I said, leave a little bit of food. Because these guys, you know, they will get milk and all that from their mom. But might as well give them a little bit of something to chew on. Like these guys that are getting close to being weaned, they could eat, you know, food and both. And if they can't reach the food, put a little bit down below. Just to make sure everybody's getting a little bit. Make sure everybody's getting water. A lot of people don't run hides, but I do. So, and that's why I come into the trouble of this. If I, if I didn't run a hide in there, nobody, does, they wouldn't be able to get up there, the little rats. So, I just make the little top so I can run a hide. And, all right, everybody. These are my tips and tricks. Remember, if you, you know, the taking out the mail, it's just kind of part of the deal. I mean, even if something did happen to the mail in, in the wild, they, you know, one of the males in the litter would grow up and, and, and that would be the main male in the bunch. So it's it's nothing that Mother Nature doesn't do. It's just, you know, what you have to do to help control your rats. And with ASF rats, it's just a lot harder because, like I said, you can't re reintroduce the male without any trouble. So if you want trouble-free population control, that's how we do it. You just kind of put the male off into the end of the grow-out bin and, and just grow up one of these tiny little babies to be the next one to do the business. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope these tips and tricks help you. Oh, and the reason why the waters aren't in there is just because everybody else will be drinking, and it's really loud during the video, so I'll put the waters back in now that we're done. All right. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope this video helps you with uh, with your your projects and your breeding of your ASF rats or uh, even the mice and, and uh, other rats. Some of these tips will apply to any of those rodents. So uh, and yeah, I got the old snake hook again. I just kind of wanted to show this off. It's made out of a golf club. I got this idea from KY Constrictors. You go over there and give them a, um, a subscribe, and uh, he's got a lot of great content, a lot of great snakes, and uh, he does a lot of projects like this, you know, the homemade snake hook. I really like it. I think it's cool. I made one myself, and uh, I, I think it was just an ingenious idea. So uh, give him a shout out. Thanks for the idea for the snake hook, and uh, if you like these kind of videos, please, again, you know, subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, like this video. It helps, you know, the, the, the channel progress to make more videos. So uh, until next time, take care and stay wild.